What's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome back to the road to WrestleMania in SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Today, we have John Cena going up against the Big Red Machine Kane in a no disqualifications match. And no, it's not 2018, it's 2010. So, you know, history repeats itself. I don't know what I did to tick Kane off, but he's really not a guy to reason with. Maybe if I put him through a table right away, I'll knock some sense into him. Again, 2010, not 2018, but the same story. Optional goal. Oh, put Kane through the announce table within two and a half minutes. That's gotta be Kane. Anyway, there is one core difference here. One core difference here between 2010 and 2018. In 2010, they still had Kane with the real fire in his pyro, because he still had pyro, because budget. Anyway, um, it is a fine Wednesday here on the show as we head toward the actual WrestleMania here in 2018, if you will. And it is pretty light on the news today, but we do have a SmackDown to discuss from last night. So, good times, SmackDown. That was the go-home show for SmackDown uh, for those guys. So, there are things that happen there that would perhaps cue into what's going to happen at WrestleMania, right? Hopefully, maybe. But there was one, I would say, brief news thing, which is not really news, because as always, card subject to change. But there was a arena. There we go. I did it. Um, there was an arena that was listing uh, Carmella in Charlotte, fighting for the women's title uh, after Mania. So everyone's like, wait, is she going to cash in successfully? Does that end the streak? And I'm like, card subject to change. Uh, they're not going to spoil that kind of thing on an arena card. It's not going to happen. Like, they'll, they'll tell them what they think the card might be, or they'll lie about it months in advance, and then, you know, you won't actually know, because that's kind of how they do things. Anyway... Uh, that was kind of the only thing that I'd seen this morning, and Kane put through a table. Kane is still just the big red machine, not having it. Anyway, on to a smackdown. Really, Kane? Really? Embrace the hate and such. Um, on to smackdown. We had a very long, like ten plus minute opening segment with Shane and Daniel Bryan that could have been done in like four or five minutes. It didn't need to be that freaking long. But, that's what they do. So, they are on the same page. They hugged it out. That happened. Uh, and so they are set for their tag team match playoff. Holla holla at, oh no! The Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla is saying something, perhaps calling me a stupid idiot or some such nonsense. Uh, because I can't hear what he's saying. Because I'm assuming that's set up like the entrance music is, and I can't hear it, because entrance music. Anyway, that means he's a, it's it's no DQ, so he can totally get involved in this matchup. So far, he's not. So far, he's just hanging out on the ramp. Oh, uh, here he comes. Here comes Chris Jericho. Okay, I need to go get a chair or something, but, yep, yep, yep. Leave it now. Peace. Don't think so, Mr. Jericho. John Cena, recognize. Yeah, do your taunt Get, 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 hit with, hit with a, get hit with a 2 by 4 Seriously. By God. That's gotta be Cena. Um, anyway. So yeah, that was long. They're, they're on the same page. Etc, etc. It's cool, I guess. Uh, I'm honestly shocked that Shane was there. I'm honestly shocked that Shane is having a match still. But, I guess not too shocked. Because he's a McMahon. The show must go on for them. And he will certainly do his best to be all Shane O'Mac, uh, even though he just had some serious bouts of illness and whatnot. So, it's kind of crazy, to be honest. Um, but, that is the McMahon fighting spirit, um, if you will. Uh, there we go. Attitude! Adjustment! Boom! Onto that big red machine cane. Now, even though it's no DQ, I still don't trust the rope break. Oh, really, Kane? I Come on, now. Oh, Chris Jericho. Oh, Chris Jericho. Okay. Rock in a hard place. 
You're, I, the camera angle's killing me here. I wanted to run... It's killing me here. I wanted to go get an equalizer, and I couldn't figure out the right way to get out of the... Yeah, okay. Sledgehammer. Who wants some? Come get some. Um, Both Raw and SmackDown did a weird thing this week where they had, like, video packages happening during matches. Like, oh, where you would usually go to commercial... And granted, SmackDown has that thing where they actually go to commercial and still play what's happening in the match. Usually a headlock or a rest hold or whatever, you know, that makes sense, fine. But having it happen on their main program, like during the matches and not going to commercial, but going to, hey, we're going to keep playing this headlock and then also here's this video package for AJ Nakamura. And I'm like, what? Are you, what? That was weird. But hey. It's WrestleMania season, so I guess that's the thing you can do. Um, I suppose that is a viable option to further promote your other shows. And you can't see them. You can't see them. Um, so yes, both Raw and SmackDown. We are now past those shows, which means we have not seen The Undertaker did not make his presence felt on either show. On either show. Like, the last shot there was SmackDown, because that, that's, that's his show. And unfortunately... Uh, it would have been easy for Cena if Teddy Long was still the GM. It's really easy to get a one-on-one -on -one match with The Undertaker if you just piss off Tilo, you know? Chris Jericho was a non-factor. He overcame the odds again! Against Jericho? Bonus unlock, John Cena in street clothes. Never backs down, never give up, never surrender. Greetings from Albuquerque, home of the final SmackDown before the Royal Rumble. Well, there's a locker room full of superstars who all want to win the Royal Rumble match. But only one guy will get the title opportunity against Triple H at the Rumble. Speaking of the Undertaker. The all have a crack at Triple H tonight for the lot at stake. It's all about the game. It's all about the game. Triple H, your match is a little different tonight. You have to take on MVP, Jeff Hardy, and Undertaker in a three-on-one handicap match. If one of them wins, they automatically face you for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble. If you win, you'll select your opponent. Have fun. So what you're saying is this match kind of doesn't matter. Winning tonight would give me a huge mental advantage at the Royal Rumble. It's time to prove why I'm called the Cerebral Assassin. So is the mandatory goal having that huge mental advantage? Or... No, it's optional. Okay. Well, again, uh, I only care about actually defending the belt and winning at the show at the Rumble. So having that huge mental advantage kind of inconsequential. Anyway... Uh, Carmella. Carmella, Carmella, Carmella. Once again, failed at cashing in her Miss Money the Bank contract on SmackDown last night. And, honestly, she's in a real tough position. Number one, she has now officially broken the record that Edge held for longest holding of Money in the Bank briefcase, etc., etc. So, that's an interesting new record. But, at the same time, uh, will she ever get a chance to actually cash in and... Will she cash in successfully? And I don't see that being possible on SmackDown. Now, there is certainly a road you could take uh, that she could pull a Seth Rollins uh, during Mania and cash in during the match between Asuka and Charlotte and then thereby take the pinfall or submission by Asuka, thereby Asuka's streak continues and Charlotte didn't get pinned, didn't submit. And that further cements that feud between Asuka and Charlotte on SmackDown. Um, without actually having to have either of them lose, right? That makes sense. I think either way, you're going to see a long and prolonged feud between those two, right? Now, there is another option. And because we have Maniac here, and because we have uh, what would one, one would assume either a draft or a superstar shakeup. Uh, that you could draft or shake up Carmella onto Raw. 
and then on Raw have her successfully cash in that briefcase. And I know what some people might be thinking. It's the SmackDown briefcase. You can't cash it on Raw. They literally make up their own rules and when they want to enforce them. So it would not be beyond uh, what they already do to say, oh, she's on Raw now and therefore she brings that contract with her and can cash in on a Raw superstar. Like, that would not surprise me. Consider that some superstars have to defend their belt within 30 days. And some superstars, <coughs> Lesnar, do not. So, again, they make and break the rules as they see fit, and that is not that that is not outside of the realm of possibility for her to be drafted onto Raw and then be able to cash in that thing there. If they want to have their first ever inaugural Miss Money in the Bank actually cash in successfully, because I just don't see it happening on SmackDown. That just seems like they don't want to break the streak of Asuka. And there's no other way to really do that and have her cash in and be champion. Because you know, Asuka's not going to lose. And therefore, Asuka's going to be champion after Mania. So it's like, okay, the streak remains intact. But then what do you do with Miss Money in the Bank? Because it's going to expire within one year. So I'm not sure how else you solve the Carmella conundrum, if you will. Not really sure. Anyway, uh, on SmackDown... We saw Zack Ryder. Holy crap. We saw Mojo Rawley. Holy crap. We saw Primo. Holy crap. Like, guys who just aren't on the show anymore. And they're on there because they're helping to be like, Hey, Battle Royal, it's important, right? No. Look at the past four guys who won it. No, it's not important. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's not. They don't do anything with it. Like, if they actually did things with the guys who won it, then sure, maybe. But they don't. They just don't. Oh, man. This is going to be a three-on-one... Assault. And... Nice. Like, that was nice, but... Alright. Gonna fight for our life here. If I get DQ'd, so be it. If he dies, he dies. Nice. You're out of there! What? What? It's three on one. It's three on one. So, I fight MVP now at, uh... Oh, man. Well then, that was fast, and on to the Rumble. That was uh, quite quick. How about that? Why are the rows blue, Casino? Don't forget the ramifications of those title matches. We're edging closer to WrestleMania. Why are the robes blue, Casino? He's on Raw, huh, SmackDown? What? Well, all right then. I guess that means uh, Triple H here is going to fight MVP since he's the one who got disqualified. I suppose he didn't get pinned. And then John Cena is going to fight somebody, I'm assuming Chris Jericho. But that'll be tomorrow. I'm a tax slug. Thanks for watching. More videos every day. I'll see you next time. Right here on this channel. And I'm out.